And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in business once again with a showdown between my empire, who shall be led by Volkmar the Grim. And today, my friends, we face off against the dreaded Tomb Kings. We're going to be led by Setra the Imperishable, so it should be a fun scrap for sure. Now, normally in this matchup, I do heavily recommend using Karl Franz. Uh, he's very capable of taking down constructs. Basically, with Galmraz and Reichel and Runefang, he can methodically work his way around the battlefield and really take out some of those heavy-hitting monsters like Tomb Scorpions and Sphinxes. However, a big however, I do actually think that Volkmar the Grim is quite good in this matchup. Sometimes the Tomb Kings will come in with a ton of spears, and sometimes Tomb Guard as well, and he's pretty exceptional at dealing with those targets. But again, you're going to need to make sure, you really need to make sure that you have assets that can deal with other, you know, big monsters and constructs on the battlefield. So Volkmar the Grim is going to be our boy here. Frontline is going to be a bit of a crusade, so Flagellants mixed in with Sigmar Sons. Now, going to be going with the Firecaster. Burning Head is exceptional against Tomb King's Infantry, and Fireball's not bad for sniping Necrotex and Casters and things like that. We got Gotrek here, ready to party with his uh, big old axe, anti-large armor piercing, so that's kind of like the compensation for Karl Franz. I'm like, okay, I don't have the traditional AP, but let's go ahead and get Gotrek, see if he's capable of bringing down these Scorpions and some of these other beasties. Three Empire Knights just to run interference. Uh, they can beat Nehekara Horsemen, and obviously they can stop the advance of Skeletons and Monsters. Always a big fan of the Knights of the Empire. Volkmar, like I said, double Great Cannon in the back, backed up by Spear. So Great Cannons just in case they go through Shopti, and if they don't, you can just shoot their Lords through Shopti. There's any number of targets that are pretty good. So for my opponent's build, pretty solid. I was actually expecting the Ushapti Grapos for some reason. I just feel like everybody uses them these days. But uh, it's actually going to be Skeleton Spearman and Tomb Guard in the front line. A bit of a hybrid front line, so a 3-2 and two combination. Two groups of the Tomb Scorpions on the flanks. A triple Ushapti? Yeah, double, no, triple Ushapti. Going to be three of those bad boys, ready to party. And it is going to be a Necrotech, such as the Imperishable, and a Hakar Horseman to the back. So very much a rush build. Now, of course, the opponent I ran into, I noticed his name. I remember him uh, being a very skilled player. So in this case, instead of shooting at Cetra, which I felt like he would be able to juke very easily, just going back and forth and wasting my cannon shots, I opt initially to shoot into the Ushapti here. And the Ushapti, of course, can't really dodge the cannonballs quite as easily. You can, like, side strafe a little bit, but for the most part, there's so many models that generally the cannons will eventually make uh, contact. And you can see here we have, despite my... Uh, oh, there we go. Two for two on the second volley. You can see some pretty big damage there on the Ushapti. So... My game plan was to take out all the Ushapti and then try and use Gotrek, of course, with my handgunners to bring down some of the Scorpions and things like that. Scorpions, though, one thing I've noticed is that Scorpions are very, very tough to bring down with cannons. I find that you often miss. You're often obstructed if they're anywhere near Tomb King's infantry. So for those of you guys playing this matchup, really be aware of that. So here we do have the Silver Bullets. They're going to be unleashing some Silver Bullets there into the Ushapti. So trying to Alpha Strike those guys down and get some value where I can. And it seems to be working pretty well. One of the cannoneers, so it looks like they were trying to snipe Volkmar off his wagon. Perhaps a little bit of a treachery. A Tomb King's agent has infiltrated that cannon crew. Who knows? But they shopped here. Are going to be breaking down pretty quick. So Sigmar Sons, a very uh, solid victory for those guys as they do rush in. The handgunner fire and the cannon fire certainly paying the troll toll. Really breaking those units down. And I do send some Empire Knights up. I forgot to pull them back. I was actually just going to charge some Tomb Guard here, but my opponent does catch me off guard. And is able to swarm me with Ushapti and all these other assets. Now, it's not the end of the world. You know, the Empire Knights are taking a beating for Sigmar. It's buying time for my cannons. That's a lot of power in his army that's doing its thing. Fireball is going to be going down as well. Onto the Necrotect. And you'll see here it's going to do some solid damage. Definitely worth it. Probably should switch the handgunners on those guys now. But nonetheless, it was good. Here on the flank, we have Empire Knights fighting Nehekar Horseman in tandem with Ushapti and a Tomb Scorpion. Now, Gotrek is going fisticuffs with the uh, Tomb Scorpion here and doing solid damage. And Volkmar plus the buffed up Empire Knights. You have the Shield of Faith. Grand Hammer of Sigmar seemed to be doing pretty well. Blasting Scroll as well going down from my Firecaster here. It's an item they can actually bring. A lot of people don't know about it, but it did some pretty good damage. And the Necrotex is getting quite low. Now my front line, of course, is unbreakable. And, uh, you know, but still isn't the highest mass. So Tomb Scorpions, Ushapti, things like that can push through. So now my opponent does a very, very good job of getting his Scorpion and Cetra back on top of my gun line. So I'm pretty much forced to pull these Empire Knights from reserve and send them in, which I didn't want to do because he was actually really applying pressure very well from multiple angles. He also had some Necrotex horsemen lurking, but... I did want to lose silver bullets, and I figured the spearmen could rotate to intercept these guys. But we'll see. Here comes the Nehekara horsemen. Those bad boys pushing in. My spearmen should be able to save most of the crew. I'll take some very topical damage. And I did also return the Empire Knights from their uh, frontal engagement to come and ride down some of these Nehekara horsemen. And uh, yeah, doing a pretty good job against those guys. Now, Burning Head going down right here. And it looks like it actually ended up killing my own troops. A bit of an unfortunate cast angle. So I was wondering what happened in the game. I was like, damn, how did his skeleton spearmen get past me so quick? Yeah, that was really funny. Okay, that answers that question. But you know what? Sigmar, uh, Sigmar will greet them in the afterlife, I'm sure. So here, guys. My opponent does get into the back line. Things are looking a little bit scary. However, balance of power is not, you know, massively in my favor, but certainly is. But it often is in builds when you have cannons. So, you know, I, my advice to you guys, if you are playing it against a cannon build, an artillery build, 
don't give up, you know, when you take a ton of damage on the approach, oftentimes, you know, uh, it's going to be a little bit false because when you're able to close the battle lines, they're not going to have as many resources invested in their melee and defensive assets. So uh, something to consider. But this cannon looking like it's in a little bit of trouble. Skeleton Spearman getting broken down. Silver Bullets trying to flee while they can. And here we got some Spearmen pulling up and behind the Great Cannons trying to intercept. And they are able to get in front of the Nehekara Horsemen. So that was kind of what I was aiming for. It's not pretty, but it still is going to obstruct these guys. Although the cannon crew does get knocked off once again. Here we have my Bright Wizard just getting ready to cast more Fireballs, but he is being attacked by a Tomb Scorpion Fireball going downtown into Cetra. And it misses. Man, I missed so many of those Fireballs this game. But nonetheless, Cetra able to juke, and the Bounce Fire actually pulls back. So just like I was saying, my opponent, you know, kills my Cannon Crew. I got huge damage early against his Ushapti units, but he comes back and evens out the game. So very well played to him, man. It's a very, very fun match this has been so far. Over here, Empire Knights and the Sigmar Sons winning most of their engagements. Two groups of Skeleton Spearmen and some Nehekara Horsemen being worn down. So very happy that those guys are performing so well. And here are these Nehekara Horsemen pretty much going to be a non-factor as they do crumble off into the Shadow Realm. And we are not quite able to stabilize that cannon, but, you know, we do our business. Who shot summoned to the back? Not a bad usage, actually. He's going to use it to chase down the Silver Bullets, probably because he realizes he doesn't have the assets to chase off with other things here on the battlefield. So he's going to be grabbing the Ushapti and hunting down those handgunners. So very, very good stuff. In the meantime, Volkmar the Grim tanking like a champ. This is his, his duty here to Sigmar, and that's what's great about him. He's like a great distraction Carnifex, really good at killing like foot characters. Not so good against monsters and things like that, but it, he's tanky, right? So it's still going to take the Tomb Scorpions and Camry and War Sphinxes, you know, non-anti-large monsters, quite some time to bring him down. So Soulfire will be going down as well. Skeleton Spearman getting melted pretty good, actually crumbling. Gotrek piling in, and these are real Ushapi, so Gotrek is going to be attacking those guys and trying to wear him down. Burning Head going down at an angle here. I saw that a lot of his troops were concentrated here, so I was able to get a decent Burning Head through his Tomb Guard. Not the prettiest one. You know, my opponent's done a really good job of not presenting me with a lot of Burning Head targets this game. And one of the things, I really felt like my, my magic usage wasn't super good, but um, yeah, still, you know, we're, we're going strong here. One Flagellant, 44 Sigmar Sons battling the Tomb Guard back here, Gotrek and uh, Volkmar making a bit of a Death Star, and Gotrek is chopping. He's... Chopping down these uh, Construct trees, and you can see the Ushapti are getting pretty low negative leadership, which is always good. If you can crumble HP off them, that's going to be quite substantial. Some Spearmen coming back, as well as some Empire Knights. Going to be trying to chase down these Nekar Horsemen, and now we do pull in here with Volkmar the Grim. I know I'm starting to fall behind in the game. I saw the Bounce of Power, so I was like, all right, let's go ahead and activate Emergency Procedures and start going after, you know, loose characters and things like that. Necrotex obviously could be a huge breadwinner in the late game by healing etc. or the Tomb Scorpion. So we're going to be rolling dirty after this guy and trying to run him over. The spokes of Sigmar are taking no prisoners. And here you can see the Necrotex certainly taking a lot of damage. He's infantry. He's lightly armored, more or less. Although he's got that whip, man. He just whipped that Empire Knight pretty good. Fireball going downtown, and it misses yet again, unfortunately. Um, so Cetra is able to juke that. And Bounce Fire does pull back towards the middle as we do kill the Necrotex. So that certainly was a decent play. Unfortunately... My Bright Wizard also gets a little bit beat up here battling these uh, Tomb Guards. A little bit sad that happened, but it's all good. The Volkmar the Grim going to be jumping into this fight. It's a scary one now. We have Empire Knights, a couple of Flagellants, I think, and some Sigmar Suns still fighting. We shopped here almost done for, as are the Tomb Guard, which is good. But Volkmar the Grim a little bit outmatched here. You know, I, I saw the banner of Sigmar Suns, and perhaps I was falsely motivated, because my opponent certainly has a big advantage in terms of power here. Gotrek, uh, I'm, you know, obviously Gotrek is very good in this matchup, but if your opponent has these big mobile monsters, you really got to compensate for them or have some way to force them to you. And I've lost my cannons and my handgunner, so my opponent really doesn't have to come to me. He could just kind of roll around on his kitty and do whatever he pleases. And Gotrek really uh, has been struggling because, like I said, he's been my countermeasure to not bringing Karl Franz this game. And um, though he's done well, um, not enough to really stop a lot of the big monsters, in my opinion. Tomb Scorpions are still going. You can see they're both at like half health here. Though Volkmar is getting through the Ushapti and maybe if we can form a Death Star, like get some Empire Knights, some Unbreakable Troops and have Gotrek and Volkmar standing, maybe Gotrek is going to be up to the task of chopping through these big Scorpions because Volkmar certainly isn't. He's very, very poor against such targets. Probably why he's considered a bit of an off-meta pick in this matchup, but, you know, I like to kind of surprise people with things like this. And of course, you know, variety is the spice of life. So Tomb Guard here getting melted down. 27 models, they lost a lot of HP, about 8 models in total, they're now crumbling. Volkmar, Soulfire, Bombardment, very, very good against Tomb Guard. Arguably, though, you could get the same thing from bringing, like, a Warrior Priest just to kind of rotate around and help deal with Tomb Guard. My Bright Wizard was able to kite back, such are the Imperishable, another Fireball's got to be coming from downtown, so I think we're 0 for 3 so far in Fireballs. And, uh, that one somehow misses. Very strange, I mean, I feel like that wasn't even a hard juke, it was just like a slight drift and the Fireball missed yet again. So... That being the case, even if we had landed all fireballs, he'd probably only be at like 3,000 HP. It wouldn't be that significant of a difference, to say the least. In many respects, you know, my opponent has gotten a better engagement throughout the course of this game, and it really has been reflected here. At the 8-minute mark, you can see Bounce of Power is definitely in his favor. And here comes the Tomb Scorpions jumping in after your boy Volkmar the Grim, and he is having a hard time, 32 HP. And at that point, I will spare you guys the monotonous grind of watching Volkmar, or excuse me, Gotrek battle these Scorpions for like 30 minutes. So... 
So yeah, at that point, it's more or less over. Tomb Scorpions are both anti-infantry monsters. Gotra could easily kill one of them by himself, but with all three of these Tomb King's monsters beating on him, it's going to be uh, impossible for him, for him to do that. At least he gets to, you know, the upside of this is he finally gets to meet his doom, which is great. So that's going to be it. Well played to my opponent. It was a very fun match and uh, a very good sport. We chatted a little bit after the game. So so yeah, in retrospect, you know, the build was a little bit experimental. Um, I think the Great Cannons are a good conclusion, but you need something to protect them. I would probably honestly just, uh, we, we can actually go to the drawing board and do this, but well played to my opponent, Legatus Leonidas. Uh, he played a very, very good game and his build was cool. It was a rush build. I mean, it, it's strong. You need, you need a Franz character. Franz can just beat down the Tomb Scorpions as well as Cetra with good angles of engagement. So, um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the army that I would probably recommend based on this. I, I wanted to try out Gotrek plus Volkmar combo to see how it would function. And not to say I couldn't have won the game. He outplayed me in many respects and got better engagements. But I'm trying to think of a more optimal build that perhaps I would have been more fluid with using. So well played to my opponent. He definitely got me that time. And now let us jump on over and go to the custom battles. We'll go to the Empire. So yeah, definitely Franz daddy. I think Franz is just such a beast in this matchup. You bring him, um, you get this, you get this. So you can go with double cannon still. And the double cannon, what's really good about it is um, it counters your shop, you great bows really hard. So now it opens up things like Demogriff Knights. You don't need the Royal Altar of Griffites. You can get like one group of regular demis, in my opinion. It's, I really do like the Unbreakable front line. It buys a lot of time for your cannons and really gives your opponent a lot to chew through. Uh, if you're going Franzo, the one downside being is that you kind of have to do, you do have to get a regrowth caster. He's sort of um, included in the cost, as as you could say. So you get him. I'll just throw him on horseback. You don't really need to put him up in the sky. I mean, you could, but it's not necessary as long as you're, you know, decent control. Silver bullets are good. I think you're going to want to get a bunch of Empire Knights as well. Um, they're just aces in this matchup. Uh, so you can see we're already saving a lot of money, right? So Franz is going to be quite solid. You can even go with some Outriders. Um, one Grenade Launcher to kill Tomb Guard is going to be good. Empire Knights should be able to deal with their mobile assets pretty effectively. A couple Spears to defend the back line. So let's get these guys. Two, three, and four. Just some reserve infantry to, you know, do the... Uh, ugly work there two outriders as well oh we're on ultra funds i was like it's like this doesn't feel right okay i was like something feels funky about this okay so as far as this goes we can start cutting down some spearmen uh we cut down one empire knight we can cut down the outriders for now and then we can go ahead and look at this okay so silver bullets double empire knights grenade launchers are really really nice here but mm, it's tricky we have enough bonus for his infantry probably with the flagellants and the empire knights i mean it's still hard to say if they go like heavy metal tomb guard you can stay on this mount. Life Bloom is okay. We could potentially cut that, obviously, to get into the positive. But yeah, I really do like having a single Demi. Like if they let a Tomb Scorpion drift into open field, it's really, really nice to isolate those guys and drag them down. Although you could cut the Demogriff Knight too and go double Outrider, like something like this. Because that gives you a lot of nasty constant pressure on Cetra too. Like they can outrun Cetra. And as long as you screen their Nehekar Horsemen with your Empire Knights, you're going to be okay. Um, that's a lot to protect though. Like if they go like Carrion plus... Maybe we cut the grenade launchers, and I feel like I need more Empire Knights, but I'm a little bit tight on money. We could also cut the Silver Bullets in this case. Yeah, that probably isn't a bad idea. Get some more Empire Knights here. And uh, then we could go with another Outrider if we want to. It's it's tricky. You have some options. I mean, uh, the Dreaded War Wagon is always fun. Yeah, we could go with the grenade launcher. Something like this. Like, each one of these guys could be protected. Spears defend the artillery, and, you know, Franz can go around and just go deep and have fun everywhere else. So, yeah, well played to my opponent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the game, plus the post-game breakdown. And I gotta say, man, it is good to be playing games again. It really, really feels nice. And until next time, you guys stay safe uh, in Nurgle's Plague. And that is it for now. We got more episodes of the Dreaded Haggard podcast on the horizon. But uh, until then, you guys uh, take care.